For our Emmys 2020 uh, contenders event today, we're talking to several of the top showrunners in town. And uh, Nichelle Tramble Spellman has Truth Be Told on Apple TV+. Plus. Nichelle, one of the biggest decisions you ever made and one of the best decisions you ever made was to hook up with Octavia Spencer, yes. who's as good as it gets, not only as an actress, but as a producer. Tell yes. us about working with her. You know, she's the gold standard. I think that I'm spoiled from this point on. Um, you know, there was one moment when we were on set and it was Octavia, Aaron Paul, and Lizzie Kaplan. And my husband, who was an EP on the show, turned to me and, and said, you'll never get this again. And I was like, don't say that. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was really true. She's an EP on the show, Octavia. So she was there from the beginning. Um, so I wrote the pilot knowing that I had her. So she was in my mind from the very first word. And she lived up to it, you know, as a producer, as a person, as an actress. And, um, you yeah, know, she's fantastic. We know a lot about her as an actress, but she does, she's had a lot of great producing projects. Mm -hmm. Got a huge award from the Producers Guild a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it was last year. It was within the last year. Mm -hmm. What do we not know about her as a producer? What does she bring to that game? You know what, the biggest thing that she brings to the game is that she's, um, she trusts everyone to do their job. She's not a micromanager. She wants to be free to create within the acting arena and once she steps on stage, so she leaves the, the writers free to write, you know, the directors free to direct. There's a conversation, we all collaborate, and then she just trusts that you're a professional and that you're an adult and everyone is going to do the best job that they can. And so she set a really, um, really wonderful tone on set. She was always prepared. You know, there was never any moment where she was not on book and it completely trained the entire set. And she insists on a happy, upbeat set. And the one thing that you won't know about her as a producer is that she actually doesn't leave set. So when she's um, between scenes, she doesn't go to her trailer. She started out as a PA and her point of view is that if the crew doesn't have some place to go and lay down, then neither do I. So she gets her chair, she's there for support, for, you know, to keep, it, to keep everybody upbeat. So it was a really, really great experience on that set. I love a good murder mystery. I always have, <laughs> whether they're films or television or books or whatever they might be. Uh, why was it important for you to adapt this one uh, for television? You know, um, we set out to do this as a limited series, and it was such an interesting idea to me to sort of, uh, you know, build a show that was in a pre-serial world where podcasts haven't really um, taken over. And what um, was interesting to me was to kind of explore what podcasting is in relationship to journalism. So there are journalists that, you know, uh, have podcasts and, you know, um, use the same standards. But there are a lot of people who say that they're a journalist just because they have a blog or just because they post a news story once in a while on Instagram. So that's sort of wild, wild west of journalism combined with a podcast and the stakes of a murder. Um, those were all really interesting elements to me. And that's what uh, me and the writing team went, we drove into. Murder mysteries and mysteries in general, um can be so tricky though. You yeah. have to you have to develop the right tone. You've got to lead your audience down a path, but a believable path. What what were your secrets in making all of that uh, success? Well, the the big secret for season one was that the central mystery beyond what we saw with Aaron Paul and Lizzie Kaplan's characters was who was Poppy Parnell. So the mystery of the series is who is she as a character? What makes her tick? And what secrets are she, is she hiding from the past? And how are they affecting the present? So as we sort of broke the season mystery, we kept that in mind and trying to figure out what she was going through, what she was hiding, and how it was affecting these decisions that she made. So you see over the course of the season, she just kind of throws it all away, gets way more involved than she should be, and then she becomes a part of the story, which then has this ripple effect of drama, crime, and um, falling out with her family and even her husband. So it was just kind of this messy dive into the story when someone is invested past the point of professionalism. Yeah, I think that's the, the, the key to the whole story here is you've got somebody who through their actions really caused a wrong to happen. And now they got to figure out how to make it right. And will people 
go along for that ride in, in their life or will they, will they, you know, what kind of problems are they going to have with a person coming forward like that? Tell us about Aaron Paul. We've, we've loved him at Gold Derby since the very first season of really back to even Big Love, but of course Breaking Bad and all those Emmy wins. And what's he like to work with? Oh, God. I, like I said at the top of this, I so lucky. He was the second person to sign on and then we got uh, Lizzie. And the three of them set such an amazing tone, always prepared always upbeat, gave it their all. And then we had, um, and Aaron was just a gentleman on set. Everyone loved him. Like the crew loved days when he showed up. And um, we had a moment at the, fin you know, during the finale where he had to come in and shoot all day long. And he was doing Westworld and there was no there was no complaint. There was never, a, you know, he never pulled a face. He was just a pro and in there. And it, they made the experience much better than it could have been. One of your secret weapons in the cast, not so secret because he's an Emmy winner too, I think is Ron Cephas Jones. Yes. Um, tell us more about working with him and brought what he brought to this project. You know, he really anchored the family on the show. Um, the actors really loved each other and they treated each other in a very protective way. And I loved seeing him as this sort of old grizzled gangster, which is so different from what we see on This Is Us, but he has such a wide body of work. And he um, has a great story coming up in season two where we kind of explore a little bit more about his illness and um you know it's just it sounds like i'm working from a script but <laughs> i got really lucky with this cast and everybody brought something new and everyone brought a different color and a different texture and you know he was so interested in the life of these black biker gangs that you know he read the book soul souls on bikes that i used kind of as a reference point i'm from the san francisco bay area and i grew up knowing about the east bay dragons and going to the uh, black family picnics that they threw in nolan park every year and i always wanted to see that on screen i always wanted to see that community on screen so i spoke to ron when we um when he was first interested in the part. And we just talked for a couple of hours about that. And he read the book and we talked about it and what that meant, meant to me growing up. And it was very much a, he brought all that texture to the part. Well, you mentioned season two. What is the development timeline? I mean, you certainly are off track and uh, not like everybody is uh, yeah. after three months, but how much is written? When would you start production, do you think? Well, we're uh, in the writer's room on, you know, Zoom like everyone else. And we've been up and running for about two and a half months now. So the loose plan is for us to go into production in October. But I think that we're all pretty much waiting to see what that means. You know, if is October too soon? Are there shows that go up this summer that will sort of be guinea pigs, for lack of a better word? And we'll find out if this is a smart plan or, you know, I hope that we're able to go up soon and we'll be ready. And this year we'll have all the scripts written by the time we start production. So if you get to start in the fall, we're maybe looking at like a 2021 actually seeing it. Yes. Somewhere exactly. in the maybe middle or latter part of 2021 after you get it all edited and everything. Yeah, exactly. One thing, uh, you won the Dramatic Writing Award with the NAACP. Mm -hmm. Tell us about getting that award and what that meant to you. <laughs> shocked I mean that was quite the category um, and I was sitting behind Lindelof and it was the first time that I'd ever met him and so I got to talk to him and his writer Cord and we were just chatting and I was eating my dinner because I didn't expect to be called on stage and they said my name and my husband um, jumped up and screamed baby girl you won <laughs> so the whole table started laughing and I just I stumbled through a speech, but it was a very nice acknowledgement. You know, this was my uh, first time out as a showrunner. So there was a lot, of a lot to learn this first year. Even though I've been in TV for over 10 years, there's so much that you don't know when you don't find that out until you're in the driver's seat. As I've talked to so many people over the years, you will never, ever forget your first big award yeah. and your first big <laughs> award show. That's going to be something you remember the rest yeah. of your life. Yes. <laughs> 